This week on Expressions, we take an in-depth look at the life and work of nationally acclaimed local artist Armando de la Santa, a 2007 Heart of the Arts Lifetime Achievement Award honoree. People enjoy his paintings because they're of old Binghamton, and it brings back a lot of nostalgia and memories. This is the gizmo that I paint with. noted for his color. People enjoy his paintings because they're of old Binghamton and it brings back a lot of nostalgia and memories. He is self-taught. I think they even respond greater than the fact just that it's old Binghamton. It's also of who they were in the past. The most popular one is Sledding Recreation Park. That's what you want in a good piece of art, is a great emotional response to it. And that's what Armando's work does to people in Binghamton. Richard Behrens was our art historian, critic, um, raconteur, <laughs> expert uh, in this area for many, many years. And when he saw De La Santa's work, he referred to it as Binghamton's Van Gogh. At the age of 91, Armando De La Santa is still painting. I am not a perfectionist. And as long as it looks good to me, that's good enough as far as I'm concerned. People are always asking me to do a portrait because I paint, you know, and they say, well, gee, you could do a portrait, can't you? Well, I can't. You know, I say, no, I can't. I, although probably I could if I wanted to. He's also still winning awards. I'm honored to present the Lifetime Achievement Award for 2007 to Armando Della Santi in recognition of his long-term contributions to the arts in Broome County. Congratulations. It's an honor. I'm honored, you know, but uh, I'm just one that can't appear at things like that. I'm shy, and I think I would probably faint if I had to get up in front of a bunch of people like that. No, I, so Louis will do the honors for me. She got me into it, she can get me out of it. His art says more than a thousand words can. So on Dell's behalf, I simply say, thank you all. His paintings are scattered all over Binghamton in public and private places, helping to beautify, celebrate, and promote pride in the community. And if you're not in a bank or the library or some other place with his work on display, chances are you're passing by a place he painted. The building here on the corner was the scene of Buddy's restaurant, the one that has the stone facing. But everywhere you look, there's a Della Santa painting. St. Mary's Assumption, which is one of his masterpieces. And the Phelps Mansion is behind us. And on the left hand side here is Little Venice Restaurant, which, which had moved a few times, but prior to being here, it was to the right of the Mohegan Market. We're on uh, Leroy Street. St. Patrick's Rectory is there. It always intrigued me as to the people who actually bought the work. They were not always art collectors who you thought would be certainly the prime candidates. One of them was a chef in um, Fulton Fish Market. Mm -hmm. He was Irish, and he was here for, on a visa for a couple of years. And his restaurant overlooked the Brooklyn Bridge. And when I showed him the work, and especially the Brooklyn Bridge, he immediately had to have that painting. And his view was when he goes back to uh, Ireland and opens his own restaurant, he's going to hang that painting on the wall because that was where he got his start, and he'll remember that 
you know, every day of his life. Delisanta sold her multiple paintings for her daughters. The next generation, her daughter bought several of his paintings, and then her daughter also became very interested in his work, and she has also purchased a painting by him. So it's three generations already of people who have purchased his work. We'll have a painting here, which I think is one of his finer paintings. It's a painting near Cleveland, New York. It's a painting of poplars. And you can see how beautiful this painting is done, almost in a Van Gogh style. And at moments in the painting, I think even better than a Van Gogh style by his use of color. The other painting that I have is Washington Street Bridge uh, from the river. Tom Kelleher has three De La Santa paintings. It's uh, one of my favorites because the riverbank is where I grew up. The riverbank's very close to my heart, and it's just a beautiful winter painting. The third painting that I have, you'll see, is of the uh, Staten Island Ferry and the Statue of Liberty. For those who can't afford to collect originals or prints, Tom, of Tom's Coffee, Cards, and Gifts, carries note cards. They sell very well. People buy the cards to send, they buy the cards to frame, they buy the, buy the cards to collect. The exciting thing about his work, which I realized right from the beginning, was how people reacted to it. In Della Santa's ability to capture scenes of everyday life and ordinary people lies great power. He inspires reflection and, in turn, emotion. It brings back personal memories of when I used to enjoy Recreation Park. One of the persons was very emotional. When she was a child, she used to walk to Recreation Park and skate there. <laughs> <laughs> the day <laughs> and walk home. She cried because it was a time of life that was an innocence. There was an innocent time of her life and she said her children today will never experience that. It's a wonderful painting that that I personally respond to because I could possibly be one of the kids in the painting because I would always go there and sleigh ride and, and ice skate so Armando could have been painting me while I was there traffic and storefronts in downtown Binghamton. Really looks like what Binghamton looked like when I was a child. It was the center of the shopping district uh, for the entire county at that point. Fowler's department store had a lovely woman who sat atop a platform playing the organ. Even though I'm only in my early 50s, uh, some of Armando's paintings of say the pig stand on Upper Court Street and Main Street in Johnson City I have an emotional response to when I never even went there. My parents uh, met at the pig stand and my father was a soda jerk and my mother came in as a student of St. Paul's Church and they forgot me with many stories about the times that they spent there. So when I see that painting of Armando's, I personally have an emotional response to it even though it wasn't part of my history. That painting I would like to have for myself in fact, although I think it's in another collection right now. His work has even had a pretty unusual effect at the McCormick Funeral Home. People come to tell me that sometimes they go to see somebody that they normally wouldn't go to see, but they wanted to see the paintings. <laughs> I think one of my first paintings was uh, of the courthouse. And uh, I think one of the first paintings I sold was at the courthouse to some lady in Pennsylvania. Delasanta's paintings document his life's travels and often landmarks of times past. This is uh, one of my early paintings. We had the rare pleasure of being shown around this shy man's modest home and his basement studio. And this is the gizmo that I paint with. My favorite scenes anyway, you know, I used to sit there and when I went to New York on the benches there and the part of the hotel and that fountain over there. His life story is a tale of humble beginnings and successes and achievements that he didn't necessarily seek out. 
Della Santa was born in Binghamton's first ward in 1916, just blocks from where he lives today. I was born on Clinton Street. I wasn't born in a hospital. My sisters were all born in the same house. We had midwives delivered us. Didn't have doctors. Nobody thought about calling a doctor for anything. And we all survived, and uh, I don't know how we did. And the house itself was kerosene lighted, kerosene lamp, and one coal stove in the, in the kitchen for heat. The rest of the house wasn't heated at all. They played, I think, what uh, would be today known as street hockey. Everything was um, what they found on the street, in the woods, or whatever to play with. He said they never had any toys. They, they never were purchased, you know. They didn't have money to buy do uh, to purchase toys. So it was all makeshift. And I was apprenticed to be a barber when I was 14 years old. I used to go after school and worked all day Saturday, and oh boy, what a drag that was. But I did go because my father thought I ought to learn a trade, I guess. His parents were Italian immigrants. It was a time when uh, various ethnic populations moved into that area. A lot of that um, hustle and bustle of Clinton Street you can now see in his paintings, and especially of downtown Court Street. I think that was an, uh, a direct uh, influence on his work. By the time I was 18, I was a barber. I didn't go to school much. I didn't go to high school, which is terrible, but I have to admit it, I didn't go. I never did homework. I didn't know I was supposed to. I had a hearing problem, and everybody else seemed to know what was going on in, in the classroom, but I didn't know what was going on. To some generations, much is given. Of other generations, much is expected. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. Perhaps his experience in FDR's Civilian Conservation Corps. Planting trees and picking shovel work and stuff like that. It was fun. Bunch of guys. Led him to join the Army Infantry in 1940. We must be the great arsenal of democracy. For us, this is an emergency as serious as war itself. The president had called for volunteers. I began going to New York when I got into the Army. I was stationed in Fort Dix, New Jersey. I hang a flag out because I'm a veteran. I feel for those guys in Iraq. I think that's terrible what they're going through. I've been through that kind of stuff, you know. Decades of excursions to New York City inspired many of his paintings. I always like going to Washington Square, you know, to sit around and walk around, take pictures, photographs. Della Santa studied masterworks in the city's art museums. He loved the Ashcan School, and the Ashcan School were artists uh, like John Sloan, who painted the everyday life of ordinary people. He also loved French Impressionism and American Impressionism. He bought art books from which to glean artistic knowledge. He never had an instructor teach him a thing about art. Right after Pearl Harbor, we went back to Fort Dix from uh, North Carolina. We had been on maneuvers in North Carolina. And uh, we went to Fort Dix, and about a week later, we were sent to Susquehanna, Pennsylvania, because Susquehanna was a big railroad center. Trains and tracks all over the place. Big roundhouse with a repaired engines. And it was really a, a railroad center, and they had two important bridges that they were afraid were going to be sabotaged. And I was guarding one of them, what they call the old iron bridge. It was an old iron bridge. Susquehanna, Pennsylvania is a place that I did a lot of paintings of for a, a small rural kind of a place. There's some great scenery there. And 
soon as I saw the place, I went nuts about it. <laughs> but halfway through a painting, I began to hate it. And <laughs> until finally, I, I keep at it, and finally things begin to sh fall into place and shape up the way I, I like, and I, then I can't wait to get back to it and finish it. And then when I'm finished, I said, now what? Start another picture. De La Santa also painted the French countryside after his tour of duty. Note the use of a brush in his early works. It was the brush that almost made him quit. He said he was ready to quit painting because he thought they looked like everybody else's paintings. And then for some reason, he took out a palette knife. The right from the start, as soon as I painted with a palette knife, I liked what I was doing the way they turned out. And uh, when I was painting with brushes, there was no comparison, I didn't think. It was a little harder, like trying to paint with a boom, but <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> The result was what I wanted. After returning from the war, De La Santa could have collected as a veteran, but chose to work instead, first in an auto part plant and later as a custom framer. I liked that kind of work. I was good at it, you know. It was interesting for me. He held that job for 30-some years, finally quitting at the age of 79. All the while, he painted and made dry point etchings from a basement studio. He had purchased a press from Sears, and it's really for um, people who do carpentry or shop kinds of things, uh, but he used that for his prints. He would have to put the uh, paper and the lucite board and the ink under it, press it, and then move it along and press it and move it along and press it. It's very labor intensive, and so um, you would say that each one is an original. De La Santa works from photographs he took, then whimsically makes additions. All the traffic and the horse carriage and the cars and the people, I just make up as I go along. I don't draw them in or anything like that, I just draw them with the palette knife and the paint. I could whip up a pedestrian or a car without any problem. His huge body of work documents the 40s, 50s, and 60s. At the time, Benton was uh, interesting. It was, it was uh, there were, you know, it was uh, long before the uh, shopping malls and things like that, which knocked out Benton. And uh, it was interesting. A lot of nice stores and awnings and uh, pedestrians. Uh, downtown used to be crowded with pedestrians. One very interesting thing that maybe not many people know is that he requires very little sleep. Because he had his studio in his home, it allowed him to um, go to bed, you know, sleep maybe an hour or two, and then get up and go into his basement studio and work on his paintings. I just think he has always had a lot of energy um, and time energy and time. Some might say those things are also from a bygone era. And I always thought, always thought to myself, if I was a collector, this is the kind of painting I would buy. I didn't mind if I didn't sell them. I was glad when I had them and kept them. And when I sold one, well, I kind of regretted it, but I, I did sell one, but not very many. And uh, <clears throat> that didn't break my heart, but almost. <laughs> When I lost one, I had to do two or three more in a hurry. There used to be an art show every summer at the courthouse. This would have been in the 50s, I believe. He would display his work there. And it was, I think, because of that that many people came to him and asked them to do uh, commissions. One of them was Binghamton Savings Bank. I think that's the biggest, largest painting I ever did. And I worked on it for about two or three months, I think, and I was ready to give up on it. I'd, I did like the way it was turning out, and I was ready to tell the man that hired me to do it. I was, didn't really want to finish it, you know, just forget about it. 
But I kept at it, and I did finally finish it, and I guess I like it now. And uh, yeah, it was a good painting, fine. It turned out all right. He did the painting of the Roberson Mansion. They have note cards of that, and, and they are using that in their advertisements. While he had made a name for himself as an artist... I got her painting supplies, too. You did. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't until the late 90s when Della Santa met Louise Burke that more widespread recognition would come. It was 1998 and um, I had seen a little one of his etchings in one of the local restaurants and um, I just ended up calling him on the phone and saying, I'd like to buy one of your etchings and he said, well, come on over. Do you want to talk about the drawing a little bit? Mm -hmm. He showed me not only the etching I was looking for, but 300 other <laughs> etchings. And I think I ended up buying all 300 of them at the time. But he, it was so fascinating to see the, the, the breadth of the work that he did, because although I went over there for a Binghamton etching, um, I was astounded at what he had done of New York City. art galleries and museums and looked around, there was nothing at all like those paintings. I don't know what came over me, but I just said, you know, I think I could sell these. <laughs> and that started the beginning of a wonderful relationship. the first shows that I put his work into, I entered a, a smaller version of the Staraka Viaduct, which he had done, and he won first prize. <laughs> Since then, he's shown numerous times in New York City, Pennsylvania, and throughout the Southern Tier. I think that the most spectacular show, though, was at the Roberson Museum, and that was in 2003. It brought many of his paintings from the corporate and private collections that uh, people had not seen before. And this included also paintings that we borrowed back from the people who had bought his paintings in New York City, including some major hotels and restaurants. That show was extended uh, into 2004 because it was so popular. His paintings have sold around the country, at times for thousands. De La Santa was honored with the star on Binghamton's Walk of Fame in 2004. I didn't think I really deserved it, you know. I didn't, it's nothing that great to be a painter, really. There's so many other painters I thought were as good or better. A lot of painters in the area that deserve something like that. I think it's one of the reasons that I decided to represent him, because he was so gentle and kind and humble and he would never ever be out there promoting his work <laughs> and there were these wonderful wonderful paintings that he had in his attic and I just thought they have to see the light of day. In the spirit of Della Santa, Louise is also playing a preservationist role by disseminating his work and introducing it to new generations. It's been wonderful to see him get recognition for his work to see his excitement and to see the pride uh, when he sees something in the newspaper <laughs> or on television. And um, it just makes me feel terrific. Della Santa has touched her life and countless others rather inadvertently. Just something I have to do, I want to do, you know. Not so much enjoyment, I maybe, but uh, just something you get into and uh, Something you don't mind doing, you know. I like doing it, and I like to see the painting as it moves along. I like to see it get completed, and I like to think about what I might be doing next. I could do a car if you want. Now I'm having a problem thinking of something to paint. <clears throat> then I think to myself, well, why should you have uh, paint anymore, you know? at my age, but I probably will tinker with this and a few other things. On his 91st birthday, as far 
All the wonderful art you've given us through Please. the years. Oh boy. This nonagenarian, who's never let his success go to his head, also remains cautiously optimistic. Okay. You think you could blow out all these candles? I think so. Okay, give it a go.